Hi everyone! So, we're almost at the end of the treaties, but before we get there, it's time for Wu to get religious. Enjoy! Argument 25. Spiritual experiences only exist in your mind, not an external reality. Since no one knows all that exists in all of reality, including skeptics, no one can say with infallible authority what exists and what doesn't. Which is why no skeptic would claim to speak with infallible authority. Even if we take something out of fantasy, like unicorns or dragons, for instance, we don't know that those type of creatures don't exist in the trillions of other planets in the universe, since we haven't been to any others beside our own. Uh, well... If you mean we as in we humans, then technically you're right. Humans haven't set foot on any body other than Earth that we humans classify as a planet. The moon is not a planet. But we have sent probes to everything in our solar system that we do classify as a planet, and other objects as well, such as the moon and Pluto. Don't start. The point is that uh, I'm going to count this as a factual error because we have actually gathered plenty of information about many planets other than Earth. But, in addition to that, earlier you said this. Argument 4. The Invisible Pink Unicorn slash Santa Claus Gambit. Stated as, Of course I can't prove that God, spirits, UFOs, paranormal phenomena, or metaphysical realities don't exist. But you can't prove to me that Invisible Pink Unicorns and Santa Claus don't exist either but that doesn't mean they're real. This ridiculous comparison tactic is notoriously common among pseudo-skeptics, yet so severely flawed and ludicrous that you have to wonder about the sanity of the person using it. So I guess the reasoning is only flawed when you're not the one using it. Furthermore, string theory in physics suggests that there may be many dimensions, which if true may suggest other planes or levels of reality that we don't understand yet. Okay, with reservation for the wording used and the fact that you probably don't have anything close to a proper understanding of what any of that means, yeah, you could say that. However, as I've already explained, what may be shown to be true is irrelevant. There may be a genuine fire-breathing dragon hiding in a cave just to the left of next Tuesday, but I won't believe that until I have a reason to. We base our understanding of reality on the evidence currently available to us. We can't base it on evidence that isn't currently available, because we don't know about it. The problem here is that you seem to think that once a model has been constructed, that means it's written in stone. In other words, that our understanding of reality is dogmatic. That's simply not true. In science, all knowledge is regarded as tentative. If new evidence becomes available, the models are updated to take that new evidence into account. In fact, that's the whole point of science, updating the models we use to understand our reality. There's another word for that. Learning. Therefore, this is another unqualified pseudo-skeptical argument based on their biases and prejudices, not based on objectivity. We simply don't know many things, and neither do they. The difference is we admit it, whereas they won't. No, it's the other way around. When a skeptic doesn't know, he says he doesn't know. When you don't know, you make some shit up. You're the one making unfounded claims, as I have demonstrated repeatedly, and you have to misrepresent skeptics in order to make this statement. Which I have also demonstrated repeatedly. Argument 26. Paranormal beliefs are childish fantasies for dealing with a cold, uncaring world. This is another biased statement of belief. Most psychic experiences don't come as fantasies or wishful thinking, but as first-hand direct experiences. Once again, no, they come from the interpretation of experiences. You're conflating the event with the explanation of the event. Often the experiencer doesn't even choose to have them in the first place, as in the accounts of those who have sudden NDEs or OBEs. Relevance? Mature adults who are not childish in attitude or behavior have had paranormal or psychic experiences. There are also many rational, down-to-earth people, both mentally and physically, who believe in God. The fact that people can be rational and mature does not preclude them having specific topics where they set rationality and maturity aside. If you're following um, 
certain popular skeptics on YouTube, you can probably find some good examples of this yourself. I'll just not mention any names because I think that would cause um, immature behavior. My point is, just because a person is otherwise rational and mature, it doesn't prove he always is. That's a non sequitur. In addition, even if a belief or religion is used to cope with life, that doesn't mean that the belief or religion is totally false. And who says otherwise? We are born with a natural belief in God and the spiritual and are more prone as children to believing in fantasies. That first part is false. We have no idea who or what God or the spiritual is when we're born. That's why there's more than one religion. We are born with an instinct to look for purpose and to favor explanations that involve intelligence and intentionality over ones that don't. That's because we observe reality from the perspective of a relatively intelligent being. It helps us understand the behavior of other relatively intelligent beings. Which is very useful, because we also happen to be social animals. Sadly, a lot of us are just not intelligent enough to realize that this is just another form of bias that actually hinders us when we're trying to understand the behavior of anything else. When we become adults, some of us turn into atheists, yes. And those of us who, like myself, were never indoctrinated into any religion have always been atheists. That wouldn't be possible if people were born believing in God. But in old age, most people end up concluding, after a whole lifetime of experiences, that there is something out there beyond the physical, some guiding consciousness, and that everything happens for a reason. Well, that's because most people are theists. It also doesn't matter how many people reach a conclusion when none of them reach it for good rational reasons. One might argue that they are just looking for a reason to believe in life after death as they near the end of it, but fear is never sustainable as a prime motivator in any belief. That's simply not true. Fear can cloud your judgment and thus affect what you believe. For example, if you're too afraid of going to hell to even consider the possibility that Christianity might not be true, then you'll probably keep believing that it is. These folks are basing their conclusions on a bigger picture view of life they've obtained after connecting so many dots in the events of their lives. Without considering things like confirmation bias, lack of controls, or the fact that they only have their own experience to go on. Plus, it could be that as one approaches death, one becomes more attuned with the metaphysical realm that they originally came from, as they did when they were children coming out of it, and so move toward a different consciousness again. It might also be that Jews are from space, but I have no reason to believe that either. Either way, we should be focusing on the experiences and evidence of these many people, rather than trying to ridicule and judge them with biased accusatory terms which contribute nothing to the search for truth. Pointing out that someone is unjustified in holding a belief which is not supported by evidence is neither ridicule nor bias, and it does contribute to the search for truth. It's by criticizing ideas that we test which of them hold up and which of them don't. That's why Wu believers cry about being insulted and discriminated against when they're criticized, and skeptics don't. They welcome criticism because it helps them determine what's true. Argument 27. There is no evidence to support the existence of UFOs or aliens. See argument 2.7. You may also find these testimonials at press conferences by high-ranking government, military and intelligence officials confessing their knowledge of government involvement in UFOs to be highly convincing. Sure, UFOs exist. That's not in question. There are definitely unidentified flying objects. The key word being unidentified. How many times must this be explained? Unidentified does not imply alien. Okay, I really don't see how that last one fits in, but whatever. Anywho, if you think we're done with the religious crap, you're in for a huge disappointment, because guess what? Next time, Wu goes full creatard. What? Does that surprise you? See you then.